Yeah. Warming up now. Cold feet. Hot water. I don't have batteries. I don't have the fan. <laughs> the fan? Um, that's it. Drop me off, man. Yeah. I'm done. Take us home. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's tasty. What do you think? Frozen. Good diving. Great diving. Yeah, thanks, man, for uh, captaining. Yeah, no problem. And thanks for the invite. Yeah, of course. Yeah, this has been great. What's up, man? What's up, dude? How's it going? Good. Good. Really good. I like your dress. Yeah, thanks. You made it, actually. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah. Made, yeah. No, it's actually nice. pretty sick. Yeah, nice poncho. How's it going, everybody? Here in, uh, I don't really know where I'm at, across from Island. I'm doing a boat dive. Alex invited me out. I came over to the island last night with the family. I met up with Kyle this morning, drove out here. I'm uh, gonna go explore around, go on the water, see some good visibility. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be really fun. Boat dive, can't beat it. So we're on the way. On our way. Yeah. Visibility's looking good. We just launched from uh, Bay Marina, is what it's called. Uh, the wind was supposed to come up, but it's not yet. Really, really calm out here. Uh, driving on the highway, we could see the uh, straight, and it looked pretty calm as well. So hopefully uh, the conditions stay nice while we're out there. I can see uh, bottom right now, the viz looks really good. We're in a little bay, so it could be different when we're in the straight, but hopefully not. Uh, herring are starting to run up, uh, and we're hoping to maybe catch a ball in the water. Seeing big schools of herring when the visibility is awesome, you can't beat that either. So it's gonna be a real fun time, real fun trip. Winter free diving in British Columbia takes a little effort on some days, but not once have I regretted a trip. These views alone were worth the effort. Just got here and looking down at 27 feet of water and I can see the bottom. Uh, so the visibility is going to behave as expected. The low tide is going to be around 11.40. It's uh, almost 10 right now. We got a bit of current I think we'll have to deal with, but not too bad. Just fun to dive a new spot. Um, never been at this precise location. Really pumped. Going to see some cool stuff. What do you think, man? Getting pretty excited to get in the water. Yeah. It's starting out a bit chilly already, though. I know, man. I'm shivering, too. <laughs> I feel like we'll be warmer once we get in. Sometimes that's the way. The wind gets you worse than the water does. Yeah. Wind chill can really get to you on a boat. Having a nice windbreaker is key. Well, the visibility was spectacular, and we were seeing impressive colors in a few meters of water. I knew we were in for a treat. I saw a video a while ago of an octopus fighting with a bald eagle. Not sure what happened here, but I found these bones next to an octopus den. Any ideas as to what these are from? We were seeing lingcod egg masses scattered about. Some with a guarding male, some not. There were a few sea lions around, so it's no real mystery as to where they went. It's unfortunate, but it's also mother nature. In less than a month from now, herring will be spawning on the shores close to here, and there will be lots of food for all. But until then, these lingcod gotta stand guard and rest with eyes in the back of their head. We were diving in the Strait of Georgia dive closure. These are areas that are closed to the harvest of all marine life by divers for the preservation of unique underwater habitats. Ironically, commercial fishing and hook and line fishing are still permitted. I could spend a day pulling up rockfish and lingcod while trying to catch a cabazon on a line, but we can't hold our breath and selectively target so much as a greenling or pick up a dungeness. I'm all for rockfish conservation areas and marine protected areas. In fact, I'm in favor of more. But to flat out ban underwater harvesting while still allowing more destructive practices to proceed just seems flawed to me. Especially since I don't go on a single dive without finding lost fishing gear polluting our ocean. I'm not naive though, a spear gun in the wrong hands can do some damage. Hold yourself and others accountable. Explore, spread out to different areas, and mix your catch up from dive to dive. Because at the end of the day, if you don't approach the ocean with sustainability in mind, you won't be catching anything anyways. The structure here was bonkers. The habitat is unique. I'll give the DFO that. On the swim back to the boat, we passed by some seals. I know it looks like I'm swimming towards them, but they actually intercepted our path. They seemed a little curious of us, but eventually swam off. Hmm, would you look at that? More fishing gear in an area I'm not allowed to harvest fish. A 10 pound cannonball rounds about $40 in store, so it's actually a pretty sweet find. Alex got one too. For the record, I'm not trying to trash talk hook and line fishing. I grew up angling and still do from time to time. I just hate double standards. Like always, peace and love. That was really, really good diving. Link caught egg masses left, right, and center. Giant rockfish, quillback, and coppers. I don't think it's sunny black or China, but still, a lot of rockfish around, big fat ones. Uh, some sea lions swam by us, saw some seals too. Uh, visibility was like 10 out of 10 uh, for British Columbia. Awesome, awesome time here. 
Uh, we're just gonna warm up. Everyone's feet are frozen. I'm kind of cold, uh, but once we warm up, we're gonna take off and jump in the water somewhere else. So our day's not done yet. Just uh, reconvening and discussing now. Even in the easier parking. Where was your last one? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Spot number two, we're uh, diving off now. Uh, and I've actually never been to, minus in transition to, uh, but never dove off, and that's for sure. And jump in here and see what we find. Yeah, I was in the water for about an hour, and it was cold. I had a real chill going, but I managed to get a link on. I was so happy. <laughs> With no pants? Yeah, it was about 45 <laughs> minutes from my house, so it was just too far to turn around and get them. So it's like either sit and watch, or again, more. Oh, try. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, try your best. I was just really selective about my dives. <laughs> How's the viz? Flat. Flat? Oh, no, I can see the bottom now. Look, uh, so she's good. some structure there? Oh, it looks like a bit of structure. Nice. There are so many moments throughout the day that I wish I could capture on camera. I gotta be grateful though. Cameras are a modern day miracle. We were cold, but the structure looked too dope not to jump back in. And I'm happy we did. Swim through galore at the second spot. I'm only aware of a handful around British Columbia, so I was pretty hyped to find multiple ones at one location. This swim through was a little tight. I had to proceed cautiously as I didn't want to disturb any of the marine life. The footage here is pretty lousy, but it's all I have to work with. Better than nothing, as they say. I only went through two swim throughs in total, but I'm sure there are more waiting to be discovered. The structure at this spot was promising, but the amount of life was a bit of a lackluster. Luckily, the unique geological formations made the dive. If any geologists are watching, I love to know how these boulders ended up here. I found an old anchor in a little cave. I love to know the history behind its origin. I'm gonna go back for it one day. Cal made a comment about me always spotting flounder and Seoul while we were on the boat. And lo and behold, these guys are tasty, but this one was a little small. I've been pretty lucky so far, and up until this point, I had never seen a ghost fishing net. None this size anyway. As depressing and frustrating as it is to come across pollution, I was a little happy to see a crazy amount of life now making this net home. I still reported the net on the Ghost Gear Reporter app, and hopefully it will one day be removed. If you spend time around the ocean, I highly suggest you download the app, link in the description. On a few occasions, I'd be doing a breathe out and a massive sea lion would pop out in front of my face. Not good for slowing down the heart rate, that's for sure. Overall, they just seemed a little curious of us, but would give us our space. We got this green link, and it's full of uh, lingcod eggs. Look at all those. This guy's going to town. Too bad they'll never uh, grow up. But at least you get this guy for dinner. That spot wasn't as good as the first, but the guy still got some greenling. Uh, Kyle and I, we filled our bag full of oysters and uh, mussels. We're gonna have some, uh, let's have some dinner later. Got one uni in there too. A uh, real beautiful structure though, nice swim throughs. I found an old anchor that I'm gonna have to go back for. Looked like an old school style. It was the size of me, wrapped with some uh, old rope on it. Yeah, it'd be cool to get that to the surface and throw it in my garden or something. Uh, I'll be back here for sure one day, but uh, we're all cold. We've been in the water for a while. Time to go warm up and get some food. I got this too, uh, moon snail shell. This thing's a mermaid. <laughs> There's no octo in there, so I uh, feel good bringing this guy back. Thanks again, Alex, for the invite, and Trevor for taking us out on your boat. I'm looking forward to future adventures. We had a fun day, and now it's time to cook some food. Got some rockfish prepared that I shot last season. Got these greenling that we cooked up as well, or we're gonna cook up, just flayed them. Me and Kyle also grabbed a pile of oysters and mussels. So we got some bivalves we're gonna cook up too. Uh, big feast, Jasmine is making some roots, some beets. Oh, gonna have a feast. I'm hungry, I haven't eaten today, so can't wait to mow down. Dude, that looks awesome. Yeah, well, that was a little impromptu. Uh, coconut curry mussel. Oh, rice? looks pretty bomb. Can I that get some carrots too. in here for you? Hopefully it tastes pretty good. Oh yeah. Can't beat that, man. How's it? Try it. Pretty good. Cool, man. Not bad for like improv little mussel yeah. and oyster harvest. Not bad. Yeah. 
Awesome, thank you, Ocean. The oysters are done. So what I did is I heated them up and let the shell crack open. And then I drown them in butter and put some seasoning on there. And they all turned out really good. I think they're gonna be awesome. I'm gonna cook for another few more minutes and we're done. Yeah. Oh, wow. you excited? How's it, man? I was, in. Mm. I was so not good. born near the sea. Oh Nor yeah. What was up, man? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're pretty good. Another great time and meal thanks to the ocean, family, and friends. <laughs> what you doing, baby? <laughs> What are, you, what are you laughing at? What are you playing? Watching the, watch the TV show? Yeah. So yesterday was really fun with uh, the whole crew here and the diving was spectacular. I go back out there in a minute. I woke up this morning and I heard a pop and my knee was in excruciating pain. That would have been like last night, probably one or two in the morning. Uh, I woke up this morning and I can barely walk. Uh, so I'm icing my knee right now. Not sure what's going on, but my knee's been hurting the last uh, month. Uh, this left shoulder has been bugged from boxing. More recently, I hurt this right shoulder. Put on like 20 pounds. <laughs> Haven't been hitting the gym. I gotta do something and figure my body out. Uh, so no diving today, but happy long weekend, everybody. I uh, hope you all had a good time with your family. And uh, next weekend, I think I'm going out to Washington and diving in Edmonds, which will be really fun. Never been out that way. All right, peace, everybody. Thanks for watching this video, and uh, see you on the next adventure.